As a doctor, picking up the early signs of liver disease is super important because the earlier you can pick something up, the better you can treat it. I'm going to give you 11 signs your skin gives you in liver disease, and then I'm going to explain exactly why this happens. If you're new here, my name is Khalid. I'm a family doctor from London. So why is the liver so important? Well, it's kind of like a giant factory that works hard to keep your body running smoothly. It plays a vital role in digestion by producing something called bile that helps break down fat and helps you absorb nutrients. It also helps with detoxing your body by cleaning all the toxin out of your body, keeping you nice and healthy. And lastly, your liver plays an important role in producing blood clotting proteins, which helps stop bleeding if you cut yourself or injure yourself. And so the very first sign to look for are spider angiomas or telangiectasia. Although about 10 to 15% of us have it, sometimes it could be related to liver disease. They're essentially blood vessels, quite small, and they look red like a red spider, I guess, hence the name. It's also known as spider nevi. They're commonly seen in people with liver disease, but also pregnant women can get them and women who are on the contraceptive pill. And as you may have guessed, it has something to do with estrogen. There are other theories as well, and there are thoughts that injuries can cause them to come up as well as your blood flow. But the estrogen part is interesting because in liver disease, your body isn't able to metabolize or break down or process hormones. And therefore, you can get an increase in estrogen levels. More estrogen in your blood can dilate your small blood vessels and hence cause spider angiomas. So this is clubbing and no, you don't get it from going to a nightclub. On second thoughts, you might do if you go to a nightclub every night and you drink lots of alcohol because it's related to alcohol sometimes and you get it with liver disease. But and that reminds me, I actually went to a Lord of the Rings themed nightclub the other night. Yes, I still go out and it was complete Mordor on the dance floor. Okay, back to the science. Clubbing occurs when the tips of your fingernails and toenails, I guess, can become a little bit curved, and this creates a little chubby looking fingernail. We think this happens due to an increase in connective tissue in the nail bed, and it can also be related to lower levels of oxygen in the tissue in those areas. Now, clubbing of the nails is not specific for liver disease. You can get it with uh, heart disease, so things like endocarditis. You can get it with chronic lung conditions like COPD, as well as inflammatory bowel conditions infectious diseases it was like a question that would always come up in your medical school exams and to be fair loads of things can cause it but really important to get it checked out because if you've got it it probably is an underlying reason okay this one pretty much everyone knows and it's looking like the simpsons or having jaundice okay so unrelated but what did homer simpson say when the baker ran out of bread and if you're thinking he said dough, you'd be completely wrong because he said, I'm deeply uh, distraught at what's happened. I have come to this bakery for some bread and you don't have dough. My children are waiting for me to bring this food and I'm filing a complaint. This is uh, an absolute travesty. So why do we look yellow if we have liver problems? Well, the liver breaks down old blood cells and it produces something called bilirubin. You thinking Billy what? Well, let me explain. Bilirubin is a byproduct or breakdown and the liver uses it to produce something called bile. That's the yellow greedy stuff that sits in your stomach. But if you have liver disease, it's not able to process it. So this bilirubin starts to build up in your body and yep, you've guessed it, you start to look yellow. Jaundice is common side of liver disease and some cancers as well, but also other things in your body can cause jaundice, like a type of condition where you're breaking down loads of your own blood cells. It's called hemolytic anemia. Number four is red palms and also known as palmar erythema. You basically get reddish pink discoloration of your palms and it occurs due to increased blood flow to the palms. We touched upon it earlier. Hormone levels can change in liver disease and that's thought to be a main mechanism behind this. And these hormone changes as well as cause Causing changes in your hands can also cause changes in the rest of your body. That brings us nicely on to number five, which is the development of breast tissue, also called gynecomastia. In response to higher levels of estrogen in the body, breast tissue begins to develop in men. And again, it's not only limited to uh, liver disease, you can also get it when you have imbalances of hormones in your body. So during puberty, it's quite common, but also if you drink tons of alcohol and if you are using anabolic steroids, um, and sometimes you can also get it with certain medications like ranitidine and meprazole. 
Those are the two I can remember off the top of my head. I had a patient a few years ago who came in with a vague few week history of a terrible itch all over the body, the kind of itch you just can't relieve by scratching. When we had a look at his skin, he didn't have any rashes, and we went on to do some blood work and he was found to have liver function tests all over the place. And so a severe itch is a common sign of liver disease, especially if there aren't any rashes. And this is due to a buildup of toxins and substances like bilirubin, which instead of being pushed out start to build up in your bloodstream. These little spots are called xanthomas. They typically appear as yellowish raised bumps or plaques on the skin and can occur anywhere on the body, but most commonly seen around the uh, eyelids. And also they appear on the hands, the uh, feet, and you can also get them just down the arms and elbows. Amongst other things, it can also be caused by liver disease. They're results of deposits of cholesterol in your skin. You see, the liver plays an important role in processing your cholesterol. And if it doesn't work, properly your cholesterol levels build up and so your bloodstream is full of cholesterol it starts to deposit it in different areas and you get these manifestations in your skin this sign is also commonly linked with something called familial hypercholesterolemia a bit of a mouthful but it just means families who have very high cholesterol passed on by genetics should probably have named it that would have been a lot easier. The liver makes a number of clotting factors and they're essential when you bleed because their job is to stop you from bleeding. So what happens if your liver's not working properly? Well, if you don't have enough clotting factors, you bleed for longer and you're more likely to develop bruising. Also in liver disease, there is a drop in the production of albumin, a protein that helps maintain integrity of your blood vessels. And so the blood vessels are more weakened and more prone to rupturing and bleeding. And lastly, in liver disease, there are a few other factors which will make you bleed longer. And these are the accumulation of toxins, inflammatory markers, and vitamin deficiencies, onsen number nine, and it's this. Dupuytren's contracture is a condition that can make it more difficult for you to straighten your fingers. The layers of tissue in your palm and fingers become thickened and tightened, creating nodules, cord-like areas in your hand, which puts your fingers in a bent position. With liver disease, there can be an excess buildup of collagen, which is the main component of the fascia, and this build up can cause the fascia to thicken and tighten, which could then lead to Dupuytren's contracture. This condition is linked genetically, which means that it can be passed down your family. So if somebody in your family had it, you can get it and have a perfectly normal liver. But it is also linked with other conditions like diabetes, epilepsy, um, and also smokers are more likely to get it. Okay, two more to go. Number 10 is something called Terry's Nails. Not sure why he's here. Nothing related to the footballer. It's basically noticing white portions of the nail bed becoming more enlarged, while the red or pink portions of the nail bed become narrower, giving this nail a ground glass appearance. It's thought that this occurs because of blood flow issues in the nail, as well as low albumin levels. And lastly, if you notice you're getting a more distended abdomen, swollen with veins around it, this could be due to a condition called ascites. People can develop this in liver disease, and ascites is caused by a buildup of pressure in the veins, bringing blood into your liver. When the liver is damaged or scarred, it can't really filter things properly and effectively. So that starts to make a buildup of pressure. It's almost like a traffic jam for your blood flow. So that increased pressure forces fluid out of your blood vessels into the abdomen, causing distension of the veins. And speaking of the veins, the technical name for it is called caput medusae because the distended veins look like the medusa from Roman mythology or Greek. My lack of mythology knowledge has always been my Achilles elbow. Okay, so you've survived two or three terrible dad jokes and your skin is the biggest organ in your body. If things are going wrong with your liver, it often tries to give you clues through the skin. Remember to always look out for the changes we've talked about. And remember, if you have one of these changes, it doesn't necessarily mean you have liver disease. This video isn't there to alarm people who have like one little spider nevi. But if you have like a number of these changes and you drink really heavily, then I think it's worth having a chat with your doctor to see if they can do some blood tests for your liver because the bottom line is the sooner you know the more you can do something about it if you found this useful or you feel you've learned something then please click on this next health video as always thank you for watching and more importantly thank you for putting up with my terrible jokes have a wonderful day peace out